Um, we have got a very special guest, ladies and gentlemen, who has just joined us. He is a two-time Brownlow medalist. He was the 1995 Norm Smith medalist where he kicked five goals in our last flag. He's one of the greatest inside midfielders to have ever played football. Uh, it's a truly fantastic to have him on, and it's great to have these sort of people on. I speak of none other than Greg Williams. Morning, Greg. How are you? I'm well. Hello. Great to see you. Great to see you, my man. Um, obviously, history with you, Carlton Sydney. So it was great to see you on. Um, what are your thoughts about this week? Um, it's a very intriguing contest. Two sides who are on the up. Sydney's probably performed better. Well, not probably. They have performed better than Carlton this year. How have you assessed both sides' um, development in season 2021? I haven't seen a lot of the Swans, but I've been obviously watched the footy a lot. And I think early on they won those games four in a row or so and they were beating Richmond, beating everyone straight away. So it was pretty phenomenal, the new kids that got in and they all seem to be pretty serious players, the young guys, and they've helped the Swans come up the ladder a bit quicker than anyone thought. And Buddy's back and, yeah, look, they're, they're going to be hard to beat. They are going to, they are going to be hard to beat. Pommy? Oh, pleasure having you on, uh, first of all, uh, Greg. But um, what I want to know is when you were coaching Carlton, obviously we know you worked with the midfield group last year. This year, Carlton uh, ranked 16 for midfield pressure. In your opinion, is the tackle pressure that comes from the midfield, is that something that's a trained skill or is that desire? Oh, I think, yeah, it is. I think... It's difficult to see why we're sixteenth. Like I, I don't understand how that could be, but uh, I know Williams was in there. Obviously, Cripps and Bolshe, and you know, there's a few going through the middle. But there's no reason why they shouldn't be tackling. I know Cripps doesn't take do a lot of tacklings. Obviously, a ball winner first. That's their main concern. I think they were working on their getting the ball and using it well and. Yeah, just the tackling hasn't been up to the standard. I think it's more the whole team as well. I think we're we've proven that we can play for three quarters or so. And against Footscray, we you know with three or four goals up, then they kicked eight in a row. Those sorts of lapses have just been diabolical, really. And um, unfortunately, you got to do it all the whole game, and you got to play to a certain level the whole game to obviously win. So, and that's what we haven't been able to do. Absolutely. Greg, um, before we sort of have a look back on, on your time at Carlton exclusively, um, one thing I, I wanted to ask you, and I've seen your comments on in particular, Paddy Dow, how have you seen seen his journey in the last couple of years? Because um, I know there's been a couple of different uh, comments in the media and a couple of different comments from Carlton fans on where they, they think he's headed. Um, and I'm pretty quite sure you dealt with him over your time. So, um how have you seen his journey and how have you seen his his development and where he can go in his career? Because he's, he's in his fourth year now. Yeah. Look, I think it's tough for, for Paddy. I, I just find even when you look three or four years ago when he got drafted, like he got back then were a pretty ordinary team and he was getting games straight away as a young kid and he was doing pretty well. But he like he should have been in the seconds for two years or so, you know, like or a year or he should have been playing – but he went straight in and, and not just him, but I think that affected a lot of players, you know. Even Silvani, when you think back when he's a young kid, like he's straight in there in the forward pocket or half forward and it's just a tough position to play. And he just, I just felt it's just a really tough upbringing for those young kids to be able to be thrown in there straight away and everyone's saying, oh, they're not this, they're not that. It's just very difficult when you're 18 and 19 and supposed to be, you know, do what Sam Walsh has done, which is, very, very difficult. And Paddy's played probably more games than he should have in the seniors, mm -hmm. and I don't think he had the grounding he should have had as a young kid, really. That's really hurt him. But, you know, he's got to fight back, and he's played a couple of games this year, and I think he's just got to get to the stage where he can fight his way back in and earn his spot and prove everyone that he can do it. Absolutely. Um, now, um, Greg... I, I sort of ask um, every a few people that have um, been on and have played in that era 
in the 90s, I've always been very intrigued by that team set up around the Premiership in the years before, but also what it was like to be around that senior staff in regards to David Park and what he was like as a coach and a mentor. He was back in the news this week because he's been mentoring Sam Mitchell. Your experiences with David and playing under him in that team, what, what was it like to be in an environment where it was ruthless and it was about, you know, winning, which is what Carlton was and I think at times have been questioned since? Yeah, I think the if you, you probably know, but in, when I was eighteen or so, I went down to Carlton a couple of times to do pre-season from Bendigo as a young kid. And Dave was coach then in the early eighties, and Blues were winning premierships then. They had the Mosquito Fleet, and you know, obviously, David gave me the ass twice, and um, <laughs> so I had a I knew him early on, and then I obviously went to Geelong and started my career, and it went well from there, but. And then I ended up going back to Carlton, of course, where David was there again. So I've got a great relationship. I saw him on the weekend at the Carlton game. Um, yeah, I just, I've just i always got on well with him. He's tough. He um, he comes across as a nice guy and all that sort of stuff, which he is. But he can be tough, and he was. He was in full control of the team, and he was a real disciplinarian. Um, but we always talked every week. We I'd sit in his office and talk footy and, you know, we, I just like talking to him about footy and I think he liked listening to what I had my views on it as well. So, you know, I really, there's a really, there really is a bond when you win a flag with a coach. Like, you know, I saw him, the first bloke I went up to the president's lunch was, I went and saw David Park and, you know, just said good day and he's fit and going well and, yeah, no, it's just a great, one of the great things about winning the flag, you know, it's the same with the players. You just have that mm. that bond and it's like nothing else. And, um, you know, I was just so wrapped that I was able to get one. Absolutely. Pommy? Well, we know that you were the most prolific user of the handball. We know that you were a huge exponent. My father-in-law has regaled me with tales of the great Diesel Williams and his handball, one of his favourite players of all time. Um, now, we know that Carlton currently, we're, we're one of the least handball side, heavy sides in the comp, 15th. Now, we know that the handball was so poignant to the 95 side. Why do you think that Carlton have kind of strayed away from that handball and it's a more kick-based side? Would you personally, knowing our midfield, want to see that handball utilised a bit more? Uh, I think so. I think, obviously, I'm a big believer in handball. I think... Um, you know, it's the most dangerous weapon if used properly. It creates run and space, so that's what hurts teams, you know, if you can get that run. If you've got players like, you know, Bradley and Ratton and running in 60, 70 metres out, running forward, like, you know, it's good night. And um, it just creates run from behind, and I think handballs are, you know, the Bulldogs use it a lot more. I think they're number one, you know, but... They got beat last night, but that's just the way they play. And um, I think handball used properly. It's like I said, space creates the loose man. The loose man is the key. It, it was when I played, and that's what I did best. I created the loose man with my handball, and it creates havoc if used properly. It does. I, I'm just going to add a, another guest into the stream. It's uh, the man himself, Johnny Allen, who's coming to say good day. Um, John, sure. can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Good morning, everyone. How are you going? Good morning. Good. Good. Uh, look, I, I'm going to make this very, very brief. I just wanted to jump on and uh, thank Diesel very, very much. Uh, I'm the biggest pain in the ass for all the former players. Um, when I started the, the Breakfast with the Blues radio show over in WA a couple of years ago, I, I did a lot of work getting in contact with these guys. And one thing I've got to say about all the past players is how, how generously they do give up their time. You know, we volunteer and, and those guys volunteer their time for nothing for a few minutes to give joy to the supporters. So very quick for me, I just wanted to jump on and say thanks, Diesel, uh, for this week and uh, for coming on today. Uh, it means the world to a lot of people. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be a pain in the ass for a few more years to come. So, uh Thanks very much, and I look forward to getting in contact with you again next year. Anytime, no problem. Thanks, Thanks Johnny. No worries. Now, Greg, sort of looking at um, back, we talked about 
your career a little bit in touch. But I, I remember reading a story um, before the Premiership year, 1994 Best and Fairest. We went, preceding that, we went out in straight sets to Melbourne and Geelong. Um, and there's stories that I've read about a certain speech you gave after you won the Best and Fairest um, that that evening. Um, if you if you don't mind, do, do you... What was sort of the the rhetoric of behind that and the thinking behind that? Because from what I've read, it's it's one that's really launched launched nineteen ninety five in itself, and um, you know what was one of the best sides that has ever played, really that ninety five team. Look, I honestly I can't remember what I said. Honestly, <laughs> brief me on it. Just give me a bit of a heads up. Uh, for, 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 from what I, from what I've read and understood. Um, I think it was in a book with Kurt, or you're basically discussing um, you won it and everyone thought it'd be like a thank you gracious, but basically, you know, it was time for the group to take ownership after the disappointment. Um, and basically, you know, it's, you know, for the younger blokes to stand up like you're, like you're ratons, for example. Um, yeah. I, I guess if you don't remember it, you don't remember it, but I, I, I've always found that very, inter very interesting in um, the way yeah, it was put on the group and it was sort of used as a motivating factor. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. I think the, you know, obviously 93, we lost Essendon in the grand final and then 94, we, yeah, went out in straight sets, like we said. And I did, I won the best, I also won the Brownlow in 94. Yeah. And I got 30 votes and it was a, you know, personally it was a great year, but yeah, just shattering the way we got knocked out. And uh, there was a lot of resolve still, like there was, but everyone was saying we were too old then to win it again and, you know, that was the. Um, I think even in '95 when we started the preseason, I think we lost by like 100 points in a preseason game to Essendon in '95. Like you know, yeah. everyone's sort of thinking, "Oh my god, you know, it's all over," sort of thing. And then um, yeah, we got started, and um, yeah, just things fell into place. We built the season up, and we, I think, we lost a couple of games. Early and then we started on a roll and we won sixteen in a row and um, took it to the grand final. We oh, well, we were beating sides by ten goals, you know, all the time. Mm. It's just um, phenomenal. And I remember we got the stage where we'd won ten or eleven, and you know we had a meeting and think. And Parkin had handed the, you know, the players were talking a lot more. The senior players and they were picking the team and talking about who should come in and who shouldn't, and, you know, those sorts of things. So. It was really great work by Parkin as well. And I think um, the players, even when we won 11 or so in a row, there was talk, oh, we have to lose one to keep going and all that sort of stuff. But we made a pack where we weren't going to lose. You now we just took it a month at a time and we just worked at not losing. And I think that was a pretty critical time when we said, look, we're not going to lose. And, and we didn't. And we just kept going, kept winning by big margins. And yeah, obviously it got to the grand final and we... One by ten again, and what a great day it was for so many people. Um, Pommy, well, we know Diesel that obviously you were no stranger to being copping the hard tag during your career, um, and you were no stranger to the tribunal, were you? Like uh, Lockie Plowman, thirty-four times, yeah, you went, you meant missed thirty-four games. We know that you were a tough footballer and you accepted no nonsense. How do you see the game today going with all these tribunals? The Plowman bump. Do you think we're losing the most beautiful part of our game, which is the toughness of it? Oh, look, I think we are a little bit, but I think we have to, and I think the you know the concussion problems are huge, and the, yeah, unfortunately, it's going to have to change, and it is changing, and uh, the heads protected, you know, the bumps in trouble, and tackling like sling tackles, obviously, and those sorts of things aren't on anymore. and um, But I still think there's no doubt about the toughness of the game and the physical demand and those sorts of things. But we've got to um, set a new precedent in regards to head contact and concussion and those those things. And girls as well. You know, obviously, they're playing now and they're, they're six times more chance of getting concussed than a man. So... Like, it's a big issue for the kids as well at school and young footballers. And local football, obviously, as well. Like, you just got to be, be careful. Hitting, getting hit in the head's not good. No, it's, it, it is not at all. Um, your thoughts on the weekend? 
um, before before tomorrow. Uh, do, do you have any sort of predictions? Are, are you looking to see anything in particular from Carlton? Um, it, it is a massive game, as we know, uh, for, for our season, really. Yeah, it is. No, I, think, I don't think our season's over. I think the guy before you spoke as well. He was all over it. Raf, Raf mm. was it? Yeah. Rafa, yes. <laughs> he was all over it. But I think I'm a bit the same. I think I don't think it's over. But if, like we need to win three or four in a row mm. and then get our season back on track to make the eight and then grow from there. But, yeah, we've got to win tomorrow. It's just a huge game. And, look, there's no guarantees either. But, you know, we just got to – I think Martin's back, which will help a lot. I like him mm. a lot. And, yeah, we've just got to be the Swans at home and it's going to be – bloody tough but these are the games we've got to start winning you know we're just a lot of frustrated supporters out there we've just got to put a few together and get our season back on track yeah absolutely i'm just seeing a comment here from from ryan who, who's asked if uh jack mccray and tom mitchell can get 40 disposals nowadays how many do you think you could get diesel 50 plus <laughs> i think yeah <laughs> I, do. I don't like confidence in regards to the possessions but um Oh, look, the possessions now, they locked up to 400 a game now. We used to get 280 sort of thing, you know. So if you do the averages, well, I think I would get at least 40 a game, yeah. <laughs> I'll rate it. I, I, I do. I do too. I think it's um, 40 a game, a um, couple goals every now and then, more brown lows. Right. It's just, it's just I, I think from mine and – I unfortunately wasn't alive to see your career, but seeing the highlights and the stories and that, I, I, I think players like you, there's a real lacking of it in terms of, you know, this the games move so far to athletes um, instead of people that fundamentally understand and know how to read the play and get to positions, um, which is what you you did so well. So it's um, it's it's a lost art form in some ways, and it's um, I, I wish we could see it more often. Yeah, I think the more it goes up and down the ground, the more I would have got you know, and worked out a way of getting it. So I think, yeah, I, I've got no problem with it. And all the other great players as well, I've got no problem with them playing today either. No, it's um, it's the game. The game is constantly evolving. Um, Pom, do you do you have anything you want to ask else in particular? There's so many questions we could ask. Greg. Oh, definitely. I, I'd love before you go. I know that you worked with our midfield group um, last year before uh, COVID. Um, painfully ripped you out of the hearts and minds of Carlton. Uh, we'd love, we want you back so badly because we saw the development of our midfield. Now you were hands on with Sam Walsh. Now for, from a fan perspective, it's like the first time I ever heard the Beatles seeing Sam Walsh play. How good is he in person to actually see him? Hmm. Oh look, he's a he's a great young bloke. He is. It's amazing how he's just come in and and played so well and. His, you know, his skills this year have improved. I really think he's kicking better and he's getting the ball more. He's um, yeah, he's really growing up and he's only, I think, still 20. I'm not sure. I can't remember how old he is, but he's he's still young, but he's on fire. He's just a machine. His running capacity is, like, phenomenal. It's just... I remember he played games when I was there, you know, and he'd come back the day after and he'd be running around like, you know, he wouldn't have played a game. Well, blokes are stuffed and... You know they're recovering, and he's just—he's just got amazing motor. He really has. But it's just uh, he talks to me all the time, asking questions all the time. Not that I get sick of him asking questions. I, I loved him asking, but he just asks stupid questions. About <laughs> like, oh, how do you get it? You know, what did you do? Where'd you run? You know, what can I do? What you know? What do you reckon here? Like, like he's just a—he uh, just asks questions all the time, and you know we spend a lot of time on his technique and his try and improve his kicking and uh, the way he attacks the ball and, you know, things like that. And his game plan, we spoke a lot about, because he really didn't really have a game plan. We I spoke a lot about that with him, that we, you know, you got to have a plan when you go out there and you got to work on it. There's so many places to get possessions and I've spoken to him a lot about that. And and he's <laughs> if he finds them, he's, yeah, he's just going to get better and better. And I think, you know, what he can do is... Is endless. It's crazy. It's crazy to think it's um. It's only his third year. That's 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 the craziest thing of it all. So he's got so much scope to grow. Um, Greg, thank you so much. It, this has been no truly a pleasure um to chat to you. Um, jump on whenever you 
wanted a no, broad, no. broad nation. Um, it's uh, everyone loved having you on and just reading some of the comments here and how much they loved and admired your career and what you did for Carlton. Um, you, you're always in, in the heart of us as a fan base. So thank you so much. Yeah, yeah good luck tomorrow with the Blues. All the best. All right. Go Blues. Thanks, Greg. Bye, Blues. Well, don't forget. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> Cheers, mate. That was truly incredible. You know what? You threw that on me, didn't you? I, I, I like, didn't know either. I, I didn't no, know I didn't, how the I, great, I, the great I, diesel was coming up. I, I didn't know either. I I, I, I didn't I didn't know either. I was um I was sitting in the um I was sitting there, I'm going through who's here. I'm like, wait, Greg Williams. So I, I texted Johnny, I'm like, Greg Williams is on. So I'm like, okay. <laughs>